On this next free fall example, we're doing something very similar to the previous one, to example number three, this is example number four. We're still finding time before it hits the ground and velocity when it hits the ground. But in this case, our initial velocity is going to be negative in the y direction. Instead of throwing it up at 15 meters per second, we're going to be throwing it down at 15 meters per second, starting at a height of 20 meters. So how long does it take before it hits the ground? And what will be the final velocity when it hits the ground? And again, time in the air is very straightforward. Time in the air. We were going to use the third equation. This one right here, because that has height and time at the same time. So we have y equals y initial plus v initial in the y direction times time plus one half g t squared. Let's plug in all the things that we know. Final height, zero. Initial height, 20 meters. Initial velocity in the y direction is going to be a negative 15. So negative 15 times time. And of course, g being in minus 9.8, that's a minus 4.9 t squared. Now next, we realize that this is, of course, a quadratic equation. We want to have the square term first. We want that to be positive, so we're going to multiply both sides of the equation by negative 1. So this becomes 0 equals a positive 4.9t squared. This will become positive, plus 15t, and this will then become a minus 20. Now we can go ahead and plug that into our quadratic formula. You can say that t is equal to minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all divided by 2a, realizing that this coefficient is a, this coefficient is b, this coefficient is c. So let's plug in those numbers, see what we get. t is equal to minus b. Now b is a positive 15, so it becomes minus 15 plus or minus the square root of b squared. 15 squared is 225 uh, minus 4 times a and times c, which is a minus 20. Notice that this minus will cancel out this minus, and the whole thing divided by 2a, which is 9.8. We can go ahead and simplify that a little bit. Multiplying these numbers together, that is 392. So this is t is equal to minus 15 plus or minus the square root of the calculator. So that would be 392 plus 225. That's 617. That's the same as before, divided by 9.8. So we get the exact same equation as within the previous example, except this is now a negative instead of a positive. So we're going to get, a, again, two answers because the plus and minus right here. So let's start with the plus square root of 16 for 617 first, which is 24.8. So let me write that down. So t is equal to minus 15 plus or minus 24.8 divided by 9.8. So here it's easier to see that you're going to get a positive and negative answer. So let's start with the positive answer first. Minus 15 divided by 9.8 equals, and we get time is equal to 1.004 seconds. Or if we take the negative option, so we get 617, take the square root, make that negative, minus 15 divided by 9.8 equals, and it'll be or negative 4.06 five seconds. Now this is interesting. If you were to look at the previous example, you'll find that you get the exact same two answers, except in that case this was the negative answer and that was the positive answer. What does the negative answer mean? Well, if you had thrown the ball from the ground up past this point, reaching a maximum height, coming back down, when it get, gets back to this point, it'll be moving downward at minus 15 meters per second. It would have taken 4.065 seconds to reach this point. The remaining time before it hits the ground again would be the 1.004 seconds from there to hitting the ground. So our answer would then be, this is how long it takes to go from this situation at a height of 20 meters, throwing something down at 50 meters per second, that therefore negative 50 meters per second, it would take 1.004 seconds before it hits the ground. Now, for the final velocity, we're going to take this first equation right here, final velocity. So V final in the y direction, is equal to v initial in the y direction uh, plus g times t. The initial velocity in the y direction is a minus 15 meters per second, so we write minus 15. Of course, g is a minus 9.8, so we write minus 9.8 times the time, 1.004 seconds. All right, so 1.004 1 times 9.8, make that negative, subtract 15 from that, and notice this is minus 24.8 
meters per second. That would be the final velocity in the y direction. Now what's interesting here is that's the exact same answer we got in the previous example. In the previous example, we threw the object upward at 15 meters per second, and in this example, we throw the object downward at 15 meters per second, and strangely enough, we get the exact same final answer for the velocity. Why would that be so? Well, it makes sense when you think about it like this. If you throw an object upward at 15 meters per second, it's going to continue upward, slow down, reach a maximum height, turn around, start falling back down, when it reaches the same spot again from which it was thrown upward, it will have the same velocity as, it's, it's, as the velocity at which you threw it upward, except it will now be going downward at 15 meters per second. So the rest of the problem then looks exactly the same as what we have here. So that's why it's not surprising that we have the same answer. So V final, minus 24.8 meters per second, and it takes just over a second for it to reach the ground.